with no doubt? Yeah. Oh, wait a second. I'm in kind of a hurry, but I'd like to get an oil change and a lube job. How long would it take? Well, let's see. I have an appointment at 11.30, and... Well, there are four or five cars in ahead of you, but I can squeeze in if I can get it right away. Fine. Just a second, I'll get a service order. shop around here? Yeah, right around the corner. See, I think instead of hanging around here, I'll go over and get a shave while you're working. That'll be fine. If you'll let me get your name. Buck Holtz. Buck Holtz. Hi, Hank. Hello, Hank, old buddy. Hi, Denny. Glad to see you. You want Gulf Fright HD, won't you, Mr. Buck Holtz? Best there is, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then a Gulf X job. That's some automobile there. It sure is. All Hank's cars are some automobiles. See, we'll check the battery, tires. All his cars? How many's he got? Six or seven, I forget. Cadillacs, Lincolns, a bunch of foreign cars. Who is he? Him? Hank Hubbard. He used to own this station. He did? Yeah. Well, we'll get on this right away, sir. I'll be over in the barber shop. Say, hey, Hank, I heard you're up in Canada. When'd you get back? Last Friday. Gonna be around with us very long, Hank? Well, I haven't decided yet. We thought we might take a run to Nassau or Bermuda. Maybe next week. time to kill. They're working on my car down the street. Oh, over at uh, Kenyon's? No, that Gulf Station down there. Oh, I see. Well, that's Dan Kenyon Station. You a uh, regular customer there, are you? No, never been there before. Well, it's a fine station, and you'll like it. And they'll do a good job for you. They do a lot of business there. A they, lot of it. They must do a lot of business. While I was in there, the fellow who used to own it came in. Drives one of those stands thick. Old Hank? Is he in town? You know him? Know him? Shucks. I should say I do know him. Well, the fact is, he still gets his haircuts here. Something when he's uh, sashaying around Europe or Hawaii or some of those places. I'll tell you one fine thing about good old Hank. His money ain't never changed him one little bit. He certainly seems to have plenty of it. Oh, yeah. He made a fortune out of that service station. A fortune. Well, it is a nice station. Well, it is now. Since Danny Kenyon bought it. But what a mess old Hank made out of it. How's that? Will you... There we go. Yeah. You'd go a long ways to find a worse looking station than that was when Hank had it. It had a dirty look, you know? Floppy. Always a lot of junk laying around in the driveway and the gas pumps. Oil all over the place. It was awful. And Hank had a guy named Rusty working for him. <laughs> and I swear Rusty would have made any place look bad. I mean, it was a regular eyesore. Well, the grocer next door used to just about go crazy. And that place of Hank's is a disgrace to the neighborhood. That's what it is. 
Oh, I like Hank. I don't want to make trouble. But he's hurting everybody's business around here. Well, don't you imagine maybe he's losing more business than any of us? All right. That's the point. That's what somebody ought to tell him. Uh, you ought to tell him. Well, you know how it is. You hate to meddle in other people's affairs. Besides, what would be the use? He'd only tell me the same thing he told Ellen. Well, I guess that's enough. Who's Ellen? Ellen Matthews. Hank's girl. Awful nice kid. And she's got a mind of her own, too. And she wasn't afraid to tell Hank just how bad the station looked. Now look, honey, why do you keep picking on me? I'll straighten things up around here, but I've been busy. Busy? You're less busy every day and you know it. Hank, if you don't clean this place up, nobody's going to come in here at all. Oh, honey, you don't know anything at all about this business, so why don't you stay out of it? I know this much. I know people aren't going to drive into a dirty, messy place like this. Why should they? There are too many nice stations. I wouldn't drive my car in here. Well, it's fine. That's great. You're going to marry me, yet you won't help me out by giving me a little business. I haven't got a car. And we're not married yet. Well, we're going to be as soon as I get going and make a little dough. Oh, listen, women always get excited about a little grease spot. Henry Hubbard. All right. I'll have Rusty start cleaning the place up this afternoon. He might start by cleaning Rusty up. Now, oh, but that's, that's no way to talk. And while you're at it, now that summer's here, don't you think it's about time you get that Christmas sign out of the window? Okay, okay. I'll put in lace curtains. Of course, Ellen was right. People won't stop into a dirty, run-down looking service station any more than they stop into a dirty, run-down looking barbershop. Don't you think so? Yeah, sure. It's a good thing Ellen got Hank to fix it up. Huh? I say it's a good oh, thing. Oh, no, no. It was Danny Canyon that fixed it up after he bought the station. But I thought you... Nobody had to tell him to do it. And I'll tell you how it happened. He got together with the golf salesman and they worked the whole thing out. Right according to the book. You see, there's a way to do these things, and Danny went right at it. Cleaned up the driveway, cleaned the pumps and waxed them, painted the whole building, curbs and all. Set up those oil can racks and those tire things. Why, he even planted shrubs and all that. <laughs> Didn't take him long the way he worked, and I don't expect it cost him much money. But when he got through, instead of that pig pen Hank had, <laughs> Why, Danny Kenyon had him a station anybody would like to drive into. Well, you saw it. You drove in, didn't you? Why? Because it looked like a place you'd like to do business with, right? Well, yeah, but there's one thing I don't understand. How this fellow Hank did well, so I much... I see what you're getting at. Well, to tell you the truth, Hank wasn't doing much business. And he kept losing trade all the time. Why, I've seen people slow down, look in, then speed up and drive right on by. The station had that dirty look about it all the time. Well, I'll take that back. Not all the time. Not at night. It didn't look so bad at night. There wasn't too much you could see. Too dark. With those weak little lights, Hank, had it looked more spooky than dirty. But Danny changed that too when he took over. He got on those new light poles, the uh, toadstools. <laughs> or mushroom lights, I guess you call them. Brighter bulbs. Arranged them like the book said, and bingo. The station looked just like it ought to look. People could see their way around. Weren't afraid of getting ambushed. Yes, sir, that Danny Kenyon's all right. Pretty smart operator, I'll tell you. Of course, he'll never make the money out of the station that old Hank did. What's the matter, did I nip you? No, but listen, you say Hank made so much money at that place, but how? Why did people go there? I mean... I know what you mean. They didn't. Of course, I don't claim that nobody traded there, but kept getting less all the time. The thing was this. Even though you knew Hank and went in in spite of the way the outside looked, it was mighty hard to stand the inside. Dirty and all messed up. Stuff kept piled around every which way. Of course, I suppose it was hard to keep it decent with that bunch of characters that used to hang around all the time. And he didn't like it, but he was too good-hearted to chase them away. So, they just chased the customers away.
You got a bad horse clamp, that's the trouble. We better put a new one on. You got time? Yeah, sure. Want to step inside while I get one? Remember that. I wonder what's the matter with him. All of a sudden, he's in a big hurry. Yep. A bunch of loafers can scare business away pretty fast. Especially ladies. But men, too. Of course, I don't suppose those fellas meant to do any harm. They're all right. I knew them. They're just, uh, well, bums. Of course, you can't expect to run a business in a place that looks like a low-grade pool hall. And Ella knew that. And she used to get rid of them. <laughs> you betcha. I see. I'd never get rid of them so fast. I... I was saying I was wrong. You just won't change, will you? You just won't wake up. The way I figure it, Hank wasn't just natural born sloppy. He just let things go, you know? He meant to take care of the place, but he, he just never got around to it. Now, you take that restroom he had over there. By the way, what do you think about restrooms? Well, I, I don't know. I, I'm in favor of them. But look, I'm confused as... And you're right, too. All I can say is you'd have to see that restroom Hank had yourself in order to believe it. It wasn't just dirty. <laughs> it was filthy. And never any soap or towels or anything. Well, I wouldn't go in there myself on a bet. And I imagine most people felt that way about it. That's just the men's restroom I'm talking about. I never was in the ladies, naturally. But I'll bet you it was just as bad. Every once in a while, Hank used to have Rusty clean out those restrooms. But it wasn't half often enough. Besides, Rusty didn't like doing it very much. He was a kind of a self-conscious kid, anyway. down there. Yeah, I know. I always use the men's room. Oh, I, I was just cleaning up in here, really. I, now look, Mac, I used to be in this business myself, see? Now don't try to tell me that that place has ever been cleaned up. So, what with one thing and another, Hank just never did get around to making the station look decent. There we are. Well, I don't know, maybe I missed something, but everything you say makes that sound like about the worst service station going. Well, I guess it was. Well, then, in what way was he such a big success? Well, he wasn't a success exactly. I guess you'd call him more of a flop. All the difference in the world between him and Danny Kenyon. 
When Dan bought the station, things changed fast. Those restaurants, for instance. Take a look at them and you'll see what I mean. Danny didn't do anything Hank couldn't have done. Only difference is, that sign Danny got that says, Sanitary Restrooms. And it means what it says, wherever you see it. The Gulf people aren't kidding about sanitary restrooms. And neither is Danny. Well, I know for a fact, those boys got a regular schedule for those restrooms. Certain things they have to do every day. And besides that, they keep checking those restrooms all through the day. Practically every time after anybody's been in there. And they got a schedule of things to do every week. Like scrubbing the floors and cleaning the walls and windows and all. I bet that sanitary restroom sign brings Danny in a lot of business. It's a cinch it won't drive any away. What do you think? Oh, sure. And you're right, too. You know, the thing is, it's not hard to keep a place up if you just do a little every day. It's when you let it go to pot and ruin for a long time that makes the job a hard one. Definite in shape. That's the tough part. Keeping it in shape, <laughs> that's easy. You know, when you get in a mess like poor old Hank did, you just naturally figure that the whole thing is hopeless. But the way Danny got things fixed up, why, it's no problem at all to keep it looking good. Oh, he had to get some new fixtures and things, but now it's a real sales room. Place for everything. Oh, yeah, that Kenyon was a real operator. But old Hank, <clears throat> well, I guess that's about enough. You, you got me confused. Uh, the thing I don't get yet is, how come this guy, Hank, didn't go broke? I mean... Yeah, sure, I, I get your point, all right. The fact is, he was going broke. If it hadn't been for Alan, he'd, uh... Well, Hank made people sore. Even his friends, like me. I remember one time I took my car in there for a grease job. I didn't do that very often, even if he was a customer of mine. Tell you the truth, I didn't much like having my car in that dirty old garage of his. I just never felt like I was getting a good job out of a messy place like that. In fact, I don't see how they ever got any kind of a job done. They were always losing their tools and equipment and all. Nothing was ever where it was supposed to be. I know I'd go broke pretty quick if I couldn't find my scissors or my clippers or if I didn't keep the plate swept off. But that's how Hank was. Yeah, uh, but, but tell me... About my car? I am. So I go over that evening and start to get in. All ready for you, Frank. Thanks, Hank. There are places on a car where you're supposed to put grease, but not on the seat. Look at this. That's grease, all right. Yeah. Look at the steering wheel, too. Why don't you cover things up so you don't get people's cars all messy? Well, you know, it's funny you bring that up. Funny? What's funny about it? Well, I was thinking of telling you that you needed some seat covers to protect that upholstery. And now's the ideal time to get them. Can you imagine that? Trying to sell me seat covers at a time like that makes me mad every time I think of it. Hey! Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. But that's just an example of why people got off of Hank. People figured why try to do business with a drunk like that. Go well, someplace else. There's always another service station a few blocks on. But when Danny Kenyon got in there, things sure changed. Well, you saw the place. It looks just like a place where you can trust them to do a good job. Looks like they know their business, and they do. You'll see. They've got all the right equipment, and they know right where everything is. They're efficient, that's what. And you won't find any grease on your car where it ought to be either. 
No, sir. You go a long, long ways to find a better station than Danny Kenyon's made out of that one. I'll bet you that Danny's doing four times as much business as old Hank ever did at his best. He's making plenty of money. Of course, not as much as Hank made out of the station, but plenty. Well, I guess that does it. Didn't take too long, I hope. I still don't get this. Kenyon bought the station from Hank, is that it? That's what I've been telling you. And uh, the place was all run down when Kenyon bought it. No business. Nothing much to speak of, but you see that... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, why would Kenyon pay a lot of money for the station? He didn't. Hank sold it real cheap. With all the money old Hank had, why should he haggle over price? Listen, how could Hank make money the way he ran the station? I because don't... Because the place was so filthy all the time. I thought I... You said... Yes, about how that driveway of Hank's was always messed up with a lot of grease and oil spilled all around it. So one night a car drives in and Hank went out to take care of him. Tell her, Doc. Uh, hey, have you got a phone in there? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it didn't set to hurry, then he went rushing across the drive, hit that puddle of oil, and fractured his skull. Fractured his skull? Yeah, luckily. Luckily? Good Lord. Lucky for Hank, that is. The way it turned out, that guy was hard Ed McCool, the gangster. $10,000 reward for his capture, dead or alive. Hank got the money. And it never could have happened if old Hank hadn't made such a pig pen out of that station. That is the most ridic... Now, wait a minute. $10,000 is a lot of money, but you can't retire on that. You see, it was a stolen car that Hard Ed was driving. Well? Well, the car belonged to old J.B. Quisenberry, richest man in the state. Well, nobody's going to make a millionaire out of a man just for saving his car. Really? Yeah? Well, it just happened the old man's daughter was in the trunk. You might say hard-headed kidnapped her. Anyhow, she married Hank. Gratitude, I guess. But you got to admit, it never could have happened if that station hadn't been so filthy. Why, that's fantastic. He's just lucky. No, nope, you can't call Hank lucky. He's pretty unlucky. He got money, all right. But when you think of what went with it, I'll show you. This is what he got instead of Ellen. You see what I mean? <laughs> As a matter of fact, Danny and the boys had this picture framed. It's hanging in the stock room over there. Just to remind them what could happen if they don't keep that place cleaned up. <laughs> I see. Well, here. Oh, thanks. Come in again sometime. I don't know why I should care, but what happened to Ellen? Oh, she drops over there now and then, just to see that everything's spick and span. Well, why does she care now that Hank's gone? What's Hank got to do with it? She got married to Danny Kenyon. <laughs>